Hello everyone, today we will talk about this space crease and a variety of this space crease use cases from all around the world. This space crease is an open source extension of this space that is community driven. This space crease was born in 2011 with a collaboration with the University of Hong Kong that intended to extend this space to provide more context around their research output to allow to disseminate other activities performed by the university and to give more relevance and visibility to the researchers, creating what was named at this time also as an expert finder system. Since then, the repository world has changed and now most institutions that hold repository platforms are no longer limited to deal with publication of data set or research output in general but have understood the importance to give context and visibility to other entities of research. This is to explain why the name in 2011 was said to be this space CRIS, where CRIS means Current Research Information System. At this time, the interest in other entities other than just research output was of prominent importance for CRIS systems, but now this difference is no longer present and this is also why the plane this space starting from the space 7 supports configurable entities all that said the community around this space grid this space crease is quite vast and there is a variety of different use cases supported by the same code base some institutions use this space crease as just a simple repository uh, uh, as a simple repository platform. Due to the fact that the space CRIS provide advanced features, some of these features have been presented in some dedicated videos. The most important one is the ability to provide the centralized edit of functionality and permission to allow user other than the administrator to control some aspect, some information in the system and to manage this information directly. Now we're going to see some examples of the DSpace Chris installations around the world, from Europe to Asia to North America, in a scenario that requires just a basic repository or just a, or a full Chris system for research, or an information management system scenario where DSpace Chris is also used in the cultural heritage domain to build digital libraries. The first one is the research repository from the University College of Dublin. They moved to the, the space Chris a couple of years ago from a basic space. They are using this just a basic repository as a showcase connected to the research information management system. They have a different system that they use as a research information management system that is currently powered by symplectic elements. And this is the website of the symplectic uh, elements at the University College of Dublin, where, for instance, I can search for another name and find the profile of the researcher. Here, on the researcher profile, I have the research output and symplectic, and these records are linked, as you can see, to the repository. So, this will move us back to the repository, and as you can see, this is just an entity, this is a publication, and we have all the metadata related to this publication. The metadata and additional information, additional statistics and metrics related to this publication. All this information, all these details, are what we found useful for the majority of the repositories. And from this publication, you can go to see in more details about the author. But in the case of University of College of Dublin, that this is not their research information management system, they don't really have additional information about the author, but they only allow you to navigate across the different publication that the same person have authored. So this example show you how the space Chris is used also where a different research information system is already in place at the university to just to pair with this research information management system. In this case, it was symplectic. 
and it was integrated in the same way that this space is integrated with Symplectic and acted just as a repository for this institution. Another example from Asia is the repository of the National Institute of Education in Singapore. This repository is quite basic, mainly focused on research output. So what you can find is that you can access content and you will get the basic metadata for this item with file with additional information. And you see that the layout is different than has shown in, in other videos, but all come from the configurable layout that has been explained in detail in a separate video. Another example is the repository InfoScience from the Eco Polytechnique of Lausanne. This repository is migrated from Invenio to the space Chris one month ago. It is a very large repository. It's more than 170,000 records and it focuses on research output. So they have mainly publication, but also patent and a dataset product in general. As you can see, you can navigate record and you will get a different organization of the user information and detail that are around publication or research output in general. Also, in this case, the space Chris is not used as a research information management system for this institution. However, they decided to go for this space Chris due to the superior capability and functionalities that were not available in the plain this space. And it was specifically needed to have a high degree of flexibility in management of permission so that users from different departments, laboratories, were able to manage some of their information without compromising security. Another example comes from North America and is the Institute for Advanced Studies in Princeton. They moved to the space Chris again to benefit from the extra features available in the space Chris in terms of simplified edit for user profile. Simplify edit also for administrators that can use the space Chris edit to avoid mistakes modifying uh, records that are already published. This repository used to have a community uh, collections as mainly used in previous versions of this space. And they have together content from scholarly communication, from research output and special collections from cultural heritage. For instance, this is a collection that contains high resolution photo of Greece inscriptions. So we can visit this item, get all the metadata related to this item and go to use the IIIF integration of this space to visualize the details about this image. Going back to Europe now, we're showing some examples that are more close to what is our uh, search information management system. So this is the open search repository from the Technical University of Hamburg. And they say that this, this is the repository for all open access publication research data and also is the research information system. This should demonstrate that the majority of the institutions don't make a big difference between what is a repository and what is a research information management system. The two concepts are very, very close and the differences are minimal and subjective. In the case of the Technical University of Hamburg, they have more content other than just research output. They have research data, they track conferences, they track projects, and all this information can be seamlessly navigated in this space crease. As you see, for instance, in this publication, in this conference poster, they take advantage of the hierarchical metadata support to track the affiliation of the individual authors involved in this poster. And they connect this poster to a funded project giving credit to the funder organization and the principal investigators involved in the project. From the project, 
you can look to other publications that were generated from this project. A very similar use is done by the Fraunhofer Institute in Germany. They track into the Space Chris repository all their research output, projects, and provide profiles for the researchers and their institutes. As you can see, this is a quite large this Space Chris instance with more than 300,000 objects in total. They use one of the unique features of the Space Chris to provide different entity entry point for the different sections of the repository. So they have this explore section that it is as a standard feature this Space Chris to create a sort of home page with advanced search capability and a dynamic list tailored to the research output. And the same is done, for instance, for all institutes. All these objects are related together and you can navigate from an organization unit, from an institute to the researcher working at this institute, to project and to publications and so on. Another example is from the University of St. Gallen in Switzerland. They use the Space Chris as their research information management system and they migrated from a uh, ePrints installation where they also track projects. Using the unique capability of the Space Chris, they were able to preserve the URL of ePrints, so they still work also with the Space Chris and no broken links were created in Google or around the web. One interesting feature that they appreciated about the, the Space Chris is the ability to assign the custom URL to some objects. As you know, this space starting from the Space 7, the URL is based on the UID of the item. This is not really convenient for research engine optimization and it's not really easy uh, to show. This is especially true for a person's profile. So, the Space Chris provides a unique feature to customize the URL of your entity so you, that you can assign an alias that is automatically solved, but it's proposed as a canonical URL for this item. And this is what we have done for the first item page. It's important to note that all the other URL coming from the space, so the one based on the UID, also work and are automatically regulated by canonical URL in a way that the search engine understand that they have exactly the same content. Another example from Switzerland is the Boris portal from the University of Bern. Also in this case, the university migrated from ePrints software uh, to the Space Chris, and they collect research data. Moving now to a different domain, we can check out a digital library from a city in the north of Italy. This digital library preserves ancient content and digitalized content. One of the characteristics of this repository, besides the fact that it has a custom layout, is the ability to use entities to give different view of this cultural content. For instance, they provide path to allow to explore the digital library content according to some thematic topics. One example is a travel to Istanbul that is revealed around digital visualization of postcards that are present in this collection. So you can see that the detail of this postcard is an entity, is a special type of entity that is tailored to the data model of cultural heritage. So this is a picture and they have some descriptive metadata. And of course, they have the digitalized version of the postcard that can be expl explored using IIIF. Another similar example comes from the National Archive of Palermo. 
where they use the space Chris to showcase personalized content and personal archives. So they have special collections around a specific person. And one of these collections is around a politician of the 19th century. So we can look to the tale about this font that has been marked to a specific entity into the data model. And we can look to the digital content associated with this, that has this digitalized form. This example shows how the space Chris is an extremely flexible platform, as the space is intended to be that it can be used in, a very, in very different scenarios, ranging from the institutional repository use case to the data repository use case to the research information management system to the digital library in the cultural heritage domain. Thank you for your attention.